Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jane Wales, founder, Global Philanthropy Forum. Good morning. We're going to see whether this mic works. Actually, it works. This is great. So, I, I uh, welcome to the 16th Global Philanthropy Forum, and particular welcome to those who've been with us from the day we began, uh, of which many of you are here. Um, I woke up this morning, as probably did you, to images of asylum seekers be behind razor fences underneath the bridge, and and news that uh, President Trump would. Uh, probably shut the border between the U.S. and Mexico. But then I was reminded that this morning I'll see Carolyn Miles of Save the Children, I'll see a representative of Racist, Jonathan uh, Ryan uh, of the ACLU as well. Civil society is there to help. Um, I also turned on my iPad, which is always a mistake in the early morning, um, <laughs> and um, saw, of course, a combination of real news and fake news. And just as I was about to despair over that, because it's really frustrating, and I am tired of hearing about the Kardashians as well, um, but, it, but at least I knew that we would meet Karen Edwards, who is the CEO of SOAP, that connects to readers to multiple viewpoints points on any given issue so that we can make our own determination. Um, and just when I thought President Erdogan of Turkey had sort of run out of rights to deny, I saw that citizens uh, in major cities throughout Turkey had pushed back him and his political party. Um, and finally, um, I got a barrage of emails um, from members of the Global Philanthropy Forum, all in airports where they're stranded because of a software glitch, and I was just reassured to know that A, you are all here, uh, but B, that's the only problem I've described uh, for which we have no solution and no role to play. Um, so that was reassuring. Um, so we're here to talk about democracy and philanthropy. Um, we see this, uh, this, this form of self-governance as, as the most respectful of individual rights, um, the most uh, able to adjust in times of change, most resilient, um, and finally, um, the one best able to provide for its citizens. Yet, um, in democracies all around the world, we're seeing the erosion of norms, including our own here, the erosion of norms, uh, institutions being challenged, and populist leaders who are, have strong illiberal tendencies, as we say, um, have been elected. Um, and they are, they are leading us away from the democracy that has served so many so well. Um, Now, in part, folks are voting for these people because of the felt needs, felt pains of globalization, um, but also because of apparent dysfunction at the national level, this absolute inability to address solvable problems that we all know so well, like immigration, like poverty, like uh, inequality, uh, very much some of, the, some of the, the pressures that globalization does, does create. Uh, but we're able to solve. That's the bad news. Uh, the good news is that citizen leaders all around the world are taking up uh, these problems, particularly on the local level, where problems are really, they're visible, uh, where, where the opportunity for cross-sector collaboration is apparent, and I think most importantly, where the reality of, of interdependence is just inescapable. Um, we have to get out of our silos. Now, in, in the couple days ahead, um, we're going to first hear from uh, uh, Larry Diamond and Kathy Martin uh, about basically give, give us a tour de raison around the world, give us a sense of what's happening to democracy, what are the common themes, what are the early, uh, early warning signs, and Brad Smith will talk to us about what philanthropy and civil society is trying to do about it. We're then going to move on to a conversation that I find enormously important, and that's on d liberal democracy's key distinguishing feature, and that is pluralism. Uh, the embrace of difference, the, will, the ability of multiple cultures and multiple perspectives to live side by side and shared in a shared society. And, and we'll talk about, uh, Peter Lahorn will lead us in a conversation about racial and ethnic and religious pluralism, but we won't stop there. Um, Larry Kramer is going to help us with a conversation about ideological pluralism and ask if those of us who consider ourselves open really are. Um, and I know that I am guilty, <laughs> that, um, that, that it's quite easy uh, to sort of stop listening as someone cites a particular cable news 
station that annoys you or annoys me. Um, I have to say they all annoy me, so it's really, I, I have to force myself to keep my, my mind open. Um, to test the proposition uh, that we can learn from the views of others and find uh, areas of, of collaboration, I'm going to have the fun of a conversation with Charles Koch tomorrow. Not only Charles Koch, but the leader of his foundation, Brian Hooks. And we'll talk about those issues where they feel see an opportunity for liberals and conservatives to come together and make common cause and do something about it. Um, most, but most of our time together is going to be exploring um, the, the extraordinary examples, the examples of extraordinary leaders that are throughout this room right now that are doing remarkable work solving problems on the local level. And so what I'm going to do is before we start all that uh, and before you get that good news, I'm gonna turn your attention to a video from Michael Ignatieff. Michael Ignatieff is a big hero of mine. He's probably a hero of many of you, and if he's not yet, he will be after this, after this video. He led the Liberal Party in Canada. Uh, he is uh, an expert in, in human rights. He's an historian, uh, a moral leader, um, and, and he is right now the rector and president of the Central European University which is going through a difficult time. So please join me in listening to what Michael has to say. Good morning, I'm Michael Ignatiev, President and Rector of Central European University in Budapest. I wish I could be with you in person, but I'm glad to know that Katy Martin, a trustee of our university, will be there in my stead. You've asked me to share a few thoughts about reclaiming democracy. I think my first one is that we're witnessing the use of democracy to weaken democracy. Democratically elected leaders in the United States, Brazil, and Hungary are using electoral majorities to attack counter-majoritarian institutions, the courts, the free press, civil society, NGOs, philanthropic organizations, and above all, universities. So it's we the people against the elites and against the counter-majoritarian institutions where elites do their work. In the case of CEU, Viktor Orban is using a majority mandate to try and force us to leave Budapest, our home for the last 25 years. Now, why is he doing that? I think it's more than a personal vendetta between him and our founder, George Soros. It's, I think, because single-party regimes distrust and fear free institutions. A university is, is a counter-majoritarian institution. It both serves the society and it also uses its knowledge to subject majoritarian opinion to counterclaims and the test of fact. No wonder, therefore, universities are unpopular. But we can't be complacent about the jobs that universities are doing. We're under fire as never before, and not just in single-party states like Hungary. Admission scandals don't exactly help. Legacy admissions have become, it seems to me, unjustifiable. Campus political correctness squabbles erode our credibility as gatekeepers of genuinely pluralist discussion. So we have to get our house in order. If democracy is being used to weaken democracy, then what's the solution? We have to use democracy to strengthen democracy once again by investing in a free press, by governing our own institutions in such a way that they do represent a genuinely wide diversity of opinion. We need to seek to recruit wonderful students from social backgrounds where a university education was out of the question. And on these questions, it's terribly important to understand that our legitimacy as servants of democracy is at stake. Now at CU, we recruit from over 100 countries and we provide financial aid to 82% of them. At the same time, we prize excellence. Four of our programs are among the top 50 in the world in global rankings. The other thing we've learned about fighting for democracy is you have to stand up for yourself. When you come under attack, you have to fight. And that's, I think, a lesson that all counter-majoritarian institutions need to follow. Stand up for yourself. I think the second thing we need to do as philanthropists, as university leaders, is to invest in democratic faith of the next generation. 
There's some evidence that authoritarian politics has renewed prestige among young people thanks to the disillusion that they have with representative democracy. And representative democracy is having a tough time. Just look at Brexit. Just look at what Congress uh, feels like most days. In the face of all this, it seems to me universities have to go back to basics and make themselves schools of democratic culture. We need to teach citizens to know what knowledge is, to know how to find it, to know how to winnow the kernel of fact from the chaff of opinion, to know how to find the truth in the middle of the digital storm. We need to teach students how to deliberate, how to think together, how to share knowledge, how to manage disagreement, and that key democratic virtue, how to agree to disagree. We need to teach them, above all, that democratic debate is a conversation among adversaries, not a confrontation between enemies. And we need to do so in some of the most pluralistic communities that have ever existed in the world. At CU, for example, we have students from 100 countries, from every faith, every region, every uh, political belief in the world. And so universities need to make themselves schools of democracy every day, because democracy is not an abstraction. It's how we live every day. It's how we treat each other. It's whether we listen, whether we engage whether we include or whether we exclude. And we need institutions that teach those values every day, that go to work every day, trying to make themselves an incarnation of the democratic faith at its best. So I hope those thoughts are a little helpful as you have your deliberations, and I wish your discussions every success.